So it asks when the current through some loop is uh, some value of current and gives you the magnetic field, what is the radius of the loop? Now, there's an easy way to do a question like this, which would be, I mean, hint even links you to the section. And in the section, it does drive the formula for magnetic field due to a current loop. Um, along this axis here, uh, it goes through the whole um, pairwise cancellation of the component perpendicular, and it, it goes through all that. And you could just, I think this is the, yeah, the center of the loop. You could just use this formula. <laughs> You're not prohibited from doing that. But I thought it would be good to just uh, do the derivation from scratch to show um, utility of Bio Sabart's law. So this is Bio Sabart's law. So, you know, imagine you didn't have those formulas memorized or have it handy in a textbook where you can look it up. You can just do this from scratch, from first principles. Bio Sabart's law says this. I mean, so you do need to have a Bio Sabart's law memorized. <laughs> it says this. It says infinitesimal contribution to a magnetic field. Um, due to an uh, infinitesimal segment of current is written as amount of current times DL, the segment of current. It's given by um, the, the way we arrange the constant we are using this semester. It's uh, Coulomb's constant over C squared and IDL cross R hat over R squared. Um, the, the collection of constants your textbook uses is mu naught over 4 pi times. Uh, so these other uh, coordinate variables, they are all the same. Really, what's different is the coefficient in front. And they are related through this relationship. So let me just, uh, as a quick refresher, let me write down this. Um, the Coulomb constant that can be related to the electric uh, constant or permittivity of free space, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And there's this uh, relationship between permittivity of free space and permeability of space that you will see um, derived at the end of the semester that speed of light C can be expressed in terms of these two coefficients, 1 over square root of epsilon naught mu naught. So with these relationships, you can rewrite mu naught in terms of C and epsilon naught. Epsilon naught can be rewritten in terms of Coulomb constant, and that's what will get you this. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you if you want to work through that essay. So with this abuse of our law, we can, uh, we can drive this uh, right now. So let me draw the loop. So let me uh, imagine the view where I'm looking at the loop from the top. So I have loop like this in a circle. So this is my circular loop. Let's say uh, I have, if you have current flowing, uh, if you have current flowing counterclockwise, then the amount of magnetic field, so since they're only asking you for the center, we'll just focus on the center. The direction of the current in the center should be um, out of the screen or out of the page that you're looking at. So that's the direction of magnetic field. So when you're applying Bio Savart's law, what you're imagining is you're imagining one of these small segments of current. This is my DL. And here, the direction of the DL, uh, let me say this is my DL cross, this is my direction R hat. R hat is always, always points from the source to the point we are calculating the field. So this is my direction of R hat. When you do DL cross, uh, let me see, uh, DL cross R hat, the direction of the thumb, the direction of the cross product is out of the screen. And um, as you go around the loop, it's the same direction out of the screen for every single point. So when you do this uh, cross product for this particular point in space, uh, the deal cross out becomes super simple. So 
I T L cross R hat. The absolute value is simply I D L. That's the magnitude because the D L and R hat are perpendicular as you uh, for any point along the line. Uh, otherwise, it would have been, you know, some sine theta stuff. Uh, yeah, but theta is 90 degrees, so that's one. Um, so, so really, all we have to do to figure out the magnetic field in the center is to say, okay, the total magnetic field will be the integral over the loop of dB. Which is, so I need to parameterize this uh, integral dL, or do I? Let me try writing this down. So I need to do an integral over the loop of Ke over C squared I dl. I'm just replaced that with my simplified version divided by R squared. Let me pull out everything that doesn't change as I integrate around the loop. So Coulomb constant doesn't change. Speed of light doesn't change. Those are physical constants. Current doesn't change. It's the same current through throughout. Now, one potentially surprising thing, this is R squared, because you are talking about a circular loop, as you go around, the radius of the, the distance uh, from your source to the point, it doesn't change. So even the R squared can be pulled out of the loop, uh, pulled out of the integral. Then all that's remaining as an integral over the loop is this area, uh, the the segment element, the DL. And this simply means adding up all these arc lengths as you go around the loop. And I think I already know the answer for that without having to do an integral. This is just going to be 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. So I can just replace the integral with that. And my total magnetic field at the center of the loop is going to be 2 pi K E I and one factor of R will cancel out with one factor of R there. So over C squared R. That's it. That's the expression for magnetic field. And um, I'm looking for the radius of the loop, so I can do that quickly. Um, solving it for R, I get radius of the loop. So moving R over, moving everything else over. It's 2 pi Coulomb constant I over c squared times magnetic field. Let's double check uh, to be sure. So I'm going to just plug this into Ultram Alpha so that it, it does all the looking up the constants and um, other stuff for me. Uh, Coulomb constant times the current, 12 ampere, divided by speed of light squared, I'll still divide by Magnetic field, what's the value of magnetic field here? Uh, 2.6 2. times 10 to the minus 4 Tesla. So it should give me some unit of length, good, uh, in centimeters, 2.90 centimeter. So yeah, that's it. So again, you know, you, you, you can look up the formula from the textbook, but you can do that. That's not prohibited. But it, I thought it would be more instructive to go through the derivation, starting from the basic first principles law, which is Biot-Savart's law.